This is one of our vendor spotlights tonight. Today's vendor spotlight is on Epifan Video. We have a very special guest with George Herbert. He is a manager, support, and training specialist. He does the Epifan Video shows and stuff like that. Before we get into the NDI November stuff, tell us a little bit about yourself, George. Sure. Yeah. So I've uh, been with Epifan for quite some time, um, and. Uh, kind of touch all areas of, of what we do here at Epifan. And what, of course, what we do is we want to help enable everyone to, you know, live stream in broadcast quality. And today we wanted to share a particular use case, I think that is exactly right up that alley uh, and touches on NDI, of course, as well. Um, and, and we're really excited to talk about that. You know, NDI November, we've had stuff that's for the individual user, for schools. This one's for government. What I love about this is this is a use case that started seeming like it was going to be one thing and really morphed and grew into a much bigger project. And that we're talking about Hawaii State Senate. So, yeah, so, I mean, they were basically looking for, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't think this story is unique, funny enough. I think that this is something that everyone uh, around the world is is running into right now, in particular within governments, right? Where uh, the past two years, as everyone is well aware, has caused all kinds of new needs to arise in terms how we deliver messaging. And governments are not, you know, if anything, they're out in front of all of that, trying new ways to deliver uh, to the public. Um, and this is interesting because, again, they need something that's going to be simple and easy to use and straightforward and reliable, but also covers a whole bunch of different use cases. And so they came around and found the Pearl 2, and it kind of fit what their needs were. And then kind of it grew <laughs> from there into a total of six Pearl 2s uh, being leveraged in, in a bunch of different spaces within you know, the, the Senate as a whole. Well, we're calling it the Senate. It wasn't like they had a single chamber. They had multiple right. chambers that had to be tied together. And as is the case, the first concept was we want to be able to go from any chamber at any time. Then all of a sudden it became, well, chamber one's got to talk to chamber three and we got to see the stuff yeah. that's going on. And this really became an incredible example of an NDI application. And the fact is that the Pearl 2 is the only real NDI appliance on the market. What I mean by that is there's a lot of NDI things that are computer-based programs and things like that. The Pearl 2 is really a dedicated appliance. Now it's a computer inside the box. I don't want to pretend that it's not, but the interface of the way you operate it really operates as an appliance. And I think that was what really made it so attractive to a government agency, because if I was going to put, let's say, six TriCasters or six vMixes in those rooms, yes, I could have done it, but I probably would have had problems a, I would have pulled my hair out setting it up, and worse, worse still, and I don't mean worse in a bad way, but something would have always constantly broke because human error is really the biggest enemy of NDI, isn't it? They have, obviously, staff of their own that needed, they're not AV experts, and they don't necessarily understand the technology, and they needed something that was dead simple for any of those people to use. Yeah. But they also deal with outside contractors, and... Some of those other solutions that you mentioned, yeah, can get very complicated. And if you're not trained in those, it can be hard. It can be a steep learning curve sometimes. And I think the example we should use is although these people who had to operate were paid by the government agency or paid by the contractor, they're really volunteered for this <laughs> project. So just like in a house of worship, you have a volunteer or in a school system, you have students who use stuff. That a government situ situation, usually the IT guys are spread all over. A uh, complex, a state, or whatever. So you got to put systems in place that the people using the systems can operate, and that's what we really love about the pearls. You know, the, I like to say "set it and forget it," which I know is an oversimplification, but you actually can do that if you take the time and do it right, and you can manage the pearls remotely, which is even exactly just fantastic. So each room is 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 essentially the same, but there are six rooms uh, for individual session rooms and, and the main Senate chamber and things like that. And the main focus there is to have three different NDI sources in each of these rooms and a Pearl 2 within each of the rooms. So this is a couple of cameras and a computer-based source. Oftentimes that computer source is, you know, a Zoom room or Zoom meeting or something like that for external participants to, to yeah. join. And basically the Pearl 2 is capturing all of these sources, doing mixing and switching, bringing in audio, and being able to live stream 
both locally, which is super critical, like you mentioned, the back and forth between different rooms or overflow rooms yep. or just observation, but also stream publicly for any session that might be uh, required to be public. And I think that's one of the big things that, you know, governments are trying to adapt to right now is that, and, and some did this better two, three years ago, and, and pretty much everyone's doing it pretty well today. Due to capacity reasons, all these different restrictions, galleries were closed, right? And, yeah. and that, that public participation in our democracies is a critical component to it. And luckily, we have the technology today that we can move that gallery online. And it means that they can provide an inside look of what our governments are doing wherever you know the people are and that's a critical critical part and and no government should be without this type of technology in play you can have this in a rack mounted version or in the standalone version so you know that's real important because some places really have a av gear closet let's say mm -hmm. and other places don't maybe other places might just be on the desk in front of where someone is what i think was so incredible about this solution was that 10 other, 20 other, 30 other municipalities haven't reached out to us because this is just a fantastic case solution. But maybe people watching this show who've been scratching their head thinking about it. And what I'm going to add is, you know, we set this up. Now there's this new thing called NDI Bridge where actually, in theory, we could link the Hawaii State House with the New York, California, and Texas State Houses if we wanted because we can now go beyond the local area network to the whole, to the whole world through Bridge. So I mentioned before there's two flavors of Pearl. So... We see the Pearl 2 base is $74.99 and the Pearl 2 rack mount is $79.75. They're, correct me if I'm wrong, they're identical units just in a different form factor, correct? Yeah, same spec, same capabilities. Um, it's really just, you know, the physical chassis and what's going to fit your needs best. You saw in some of these shots that in Hawaii, they actually chose the portable in some of the places because they're just, you know, putting it in a space where there just isn't a rack, there's other equipment. And so it takes up a much smaller footprint there. Um, and, you know, we've seen that a lot in, in churches as well, where, you know, they're, they're trying to cram all this video gear into spaces that maybe were only built and intended for audio stuff um, and similar here. So but those places that fits great at the portable one, maybe, you know, you only need to buy a couple of them because you're going to move it from room to room. It comes in a case. But of course, the rack mount is perfect for putting into, uh, like you said, that rack with all of that other gear that typically comes along with a larger installation. and The Pearl 2, the full base unit or the rack mount, those are the units that are NDI capable. Unfortunately, two other great products, the Pearl Mini and the Pearl Nano, are not NDI. And the reason is just simply that there's enough power in the box to get, we use a less expensive you know, chip and memory and everything like that. It just doesn't have the overhead to run NDI for now. The exactly. other thing that I want to talk about is when you look at the Pearl 2, let's review everything this product does. It can live stream. It can mix yeah. multiple inputs, it can record, it can playback recorded content, and it can be controlled remotely to start and stop from a remote operator through basically a, an iPad, any, any uh, uh, web browser interface. So with Perl 2, we can bring up to six full HD inputs in from sources like HDMI, SDI, NDI, SRT, you know, all these different uh, capabilities, depending on the scale of the operation. Now, this use case is particularly using NDI, but it could just as have easily been using HDMI or SDI-based signals as well. But one very important part is being able to set up multiple encoders at yes. the same time for streaming and recording, yep. which means in full HD, we could have as many as six separate encodes running at the same time on a single Perl 2 each one of them streaming and recording on its own, which means maybe you have a lower setting. You can do all of that on a single device, right? So we're taking what used to be a whole rack worth of stuff with mixers, scalers, streamers, yep. recorders, and condensing it down into one package, which makes it easier to manage uh, and, and just so much easier to integrate. The screen gives us a reference monitor, so we always yeah. know what's cooking, what it's doing, what it's doing correctly. And it also, one of the things that we didn't talk about in this show, because I don't think Hawaii is using it that way, but I think it's important, is we can set up like picture in picture and pushes and side-by-side -side presets with any yeah. combination of video sources, and those can be used for different things as well. So I could be sending just a single camera out to record because I want to have a recording of that. Well, I could be streaming 
a, 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 a picture that's got the person maybe in a PIP with the full screen being of the presentation or whatever it is. And these things can be pre-configured so that the person operating it, be it the uh, elected official, the volunteer in the church, or the student, can simply advance through and hit these screens very simply and easily. It's not complicated. You take a little bit of time to preset it up. You can add lower thirds and graphics and bugs and things like that as well. This really is a yeah. dynamic system. It's really, I like to say this is a fully functioning multi-input mixer, switcher, and encoder and an appliance type interface and reliability box. It simplifies very complex productions. And what the folks at Hawaii did is just incredible. I just, I, kudos to them for having the foresight and the trust in our technology to deliver something that they're really, they're so far ahead of everyone else right now in what they're doing there. Yeah, and I do want to highlight a critical part of their workflow again is that, you know, not only are they streaming out publicly, you know, platforms like YouTube and et cetera that we're all very familiar with these days, but they are also streaming locally on the network from the same device at the same time. So they're able to reach those breakout rooms, those session rooms, you know, overflow rooms, whatever they might be locally within the network and stream publicly from the same device. And that really simplifies what they can do. And there's a variety of protocols that can help them do that. So whether they want to integrate with maybe a digital signage system or just using NDI or, you know, whatever the case may be, all of those options are there within Perl 2. Every single day, I'm hearing about new governments at municipal levels, at state levels, at federal levels that are using Perl's all three models, yep. depending on what their needs are. Um, in, in new ways. And, and again, it's just really opening up the possibilities of, of what we can do. This is the part of the show where I like to give you the last word. So George, we, we covered a lot on the Pearl too. We covered a lot on this use case. We covered a lot on NDI for NDI November. Floor is yours, take it away. Coming back to the use case a little bit, this is just one example of you know the incredible flexible ways we've been seeing people use the Pearl products. And we're incredibly proud of, of what people have done and how they've learned to use them and leverage them. And it's really exciting uh, to see every day a new use case like this. And we do write up as many as we can and put them on our website. And we do encourage people to check those out, whether it's this one from Hawaii or whether it's you know something uh, more recent one we did from an art auction house here in Canada where I'm located doing remote contribution over SRT using Pearl Nanos. Live streaming is an incredible technology and being able to bring that forward to everyone and, and, and let people create content at an extremely high quality while being easy to use and innovative is amazing. It's something that's totally makes it worthwhile for me waking up every morning and doing this because it's, it's just absolutely incredible to see how people are leveraging at all levels, like you mentioned, whether it's governments or churches or schools. It's absolutely fantastic technology, and, and it's really helping you know, break down all these barriers and, uh, and make things a lot easier. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I have a saying that I've been saying all year, and that is, you know, in 2020, we just made live streaming work. We didn't have a choice to yeah. make it work. In 2021, we make it look better work better and easier than ever to do. And I think in 2022, we're going to make the capability to do it remotely and make it more powerful and more shared and more, I think the right word is ubiquitous. It's going to be everywhere. So George, thank you yeah. so much for being on the show for the NDI November uh, uh, Epifan uh, Vendor Spotlight. I thank you very much, guys. Keep tuning in and uh, thank you. Peace.